As football season kicks off, a true trailblazer begins her second season running an NFL team. Last July, Sandra Douglas Morgan was named president of the Las Vegas Raiders, marking her the first woman of color president and the NFL's 103-year history. Before tackling this new role, she was an accomplished attorney and an advisor who helped shape how states adopt sports betting. Back in 2018, when the Supreme Court cleared a path for legalizing the $13 billion sports betting industry, Morgan became a gaming regulator in the state of Nevada. Since then, 32 other states and Washington, D.C. have launched sports betting. And in yet another first for the team, Las Vegas will host the Super Bowl for the very first time in February of 2024. Joining me now is Sandra Douglas Morgan, the president of the Las Vegas Raiders. Sandra, it's an honor to have you join the show this morning. You've pointed out in other media that your black and Korean heritage may have helped put you in the spotlight, but it's your work outside of sports that also is key to bringing diversity to the Raiders front office. Talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, thank you for having me, Katie. You know, it, the, the Raiders have had such a rich and diverse history with respect to leadership, whether it be um, with coaches and, and general managers and, and now with presidents as well. And so I'm really proud to be a part of an organization that actually invested and, and believed in diversity and equity and inclusion before it was something that it was even discussed more widely, whether it be having the first African-American head coach in Art Shell and um, also Tom Flores of, of Hispanic Heritage and Amy Trask as an initial first female CEO in, in um, the National Football League. So being a Raider and having, um, you know, being part of this community and being part of that culture, um, is, I'm incredibly proud to have been welcomed into an organization that truly believes in that and just doesn't talk the talk, but walks the walk as well. Uh, being able to host the Super Bowl in my in my hometown city of Las Vegas mm -hmm. is, is really a dream come true, just seeing the evolution and growth of sports and what the Raiders have been able to bring um, to Southern Nevada. So I wanted to ask you uh, a little bit on a personal level. Your mom is Korean. She's an immigrant from Korea. She worked late night shifts in casinos to support herself and the family as you were growing up. How does it feel to have your legacy be uh, kind of helping to define her legacy as well? Because you're breaking barriers. And so she must be thrilled to see you um, really living out the next kind of set, the next stage of the American dream. Thank you. Yeah, Katie, you know, my mother is was incredibly hardworking. And my my father, they met because my father actually retired in, in Las Vegas as an Air Force veteran. My mother worked in the gaming industry on and off when I was growing up. And they just really instilled the importance of hard work and education. And my mother is, um, you know, clearly high values of integrity and just kind of doing the right thing and making sure that we are people of our word. And just seeing how and hearing about, you know, stories about them working late nights and how they were treated, they always made sure that my sister and I had a stable home and just focused on education and making sure that we were going to not only make ourselves proud and be able to make our families proud, uh, but be able to instill just high values of um, education and integrity. So they, she really gave everything she could to make sure that my sister and I were on stable footing. And I'm and I'll be proud to say that she is now a diehard Raiders fan, <laughs> was an initially a kind of a casual football fan when my husband is actually playing, but um, she watches the game all the time, leads the silver and black like the rest of us. And um, I'm just I'm just glad that she's able to see me on this journey as well. So one of your favorite mantras is one of my favorite mantras, which is you can't be what you can't see. You've clearly earned all the accolades substantively as an attorney, um, also chairing the very first chair of the Nevada Gaming Commission in your role. And now as the first female president in the NFL, um, Amy, as a woman of color, I wanted to ask you how much of that mantra, you can't be what you can't see, defines how you're approaching your role in the Raiders and also what you're outwardly kind of, you know, just putting out there into the community for people to look towards. You know, Katie, when I took this position, it was about the team. And obviously, that's going to be first and foremost, our, our amazing employees that, that have an incredible game day experience and help um, usher in concerts and, and just are really working day and night to make sure the Raiders are going to continue to be um, to um, actually believe in our commitment to excellence. Um, however, when I first took this role, I actually came across a season ticket holder and their family, and he actually said that his daughter for the first time said, hey, Dad, maybe I can be an NFL president, too. And that was really a turning point for me because I'd traditionally been, you know, behind the scenes, and I, I still really enjoy that and working with my team. But understanding that now me being more visible in this role, it gives, you know, women and girls additional thoughts about what they could be in the future and additional opportunities and, and their potential to be executives in sports leadership positions. And so because of that, it's really important for me to explain what it means to be a Raider, explain how I actually came to be in this position and explain the importance of being a part of the team and how women can continue to lead.